Okay, so after the last video, you might be thinking that any function that we can write down in a nice algebraic form is a continuous function. So when is a function not continuous? Is continuous. When are functions discontinuous? Okay. Well, they're discontinuous when we run into kind of problem points, right? The only problem point would be a point where we either divide by zero, right? If we try to take a logarithm of zero or a negative number, right? Or maybe where, uh, you know, if we have a piecewise function, where these piecewise functions are pieced together. You know, so the endpoints, you know, piece, uh, piecing together points. Right, so if you have a piecewise defined function, then the places where you're piecing them together might be problem points for your discontinuous one. Right, so let's start with dividing by zero. We saw some of these when we were talking about infinite limits, right? So some basic functions where they're discontinuous. So f of x equals 1 over x, right? That's discontinuous at x equals 0, right? Because then you're trying to divide by 0, and that's a problem, right? Because you can't define the value of 1 over 0. It goes off to infinity, as we saw in the limit, right? This continues at x equals zero, but it's continuous everywhere else. Okay? So it's only discontinuous at certain points. Right? Another one would be, you know, f of x equals one over x squared, right? That's also discontinuous. Zero. Right? And so let's switch over to algebra. Sorry, that's the most. Okay, so here's 1 over x, right? You can see that it has to be discontinuous at 0, because how are you going to get from this piece, right? If you're drawing this piece, it goes all the way off to negative infinity down here, and if you're drawing that piece, it goes all the way off to infinity, and there's nowhere for you to, you know, draw, you know, connect these two lines without picking your pencil up, paper, and drawing the second part of this, right? Same thing with 1 over x squared, right? Even though they go to the same place, Right, they're going off to infinity, and even though it looks like Desmos has connected them, they're, they zoom in, they're never actually touching. These two pieces never actually touch. It's not a continuous function, right? We have to jump from one side of this function to the other. It doesn't have a definition, doesn't have a value at zero. There's no way to kind of combine these two functions with our pencil. Okay, another one is sine of one over x. This is another example of a discontinuous function, though when you plot it, it doesn't really look like it. But you can think, okay, I'm dividing by zero on the bottom, so that has to be a problem, right? So if I zoom in, it just oscillates more and more and more. Um, and so you can't really even see that this is discontinuous, and this is kind of a weird one, but you're dividing by zero at x equals zero, so it's not defined at it. Okay, and it kind of oscillates like crazy. As you approach zero, so it doesn't even have a limit um, that we can see right away with our eyes. Okay, another one that is kind of piecewise defined would be tangent of x. Okay, this is a discontinuous function. If you zoom out, you see that these are asymptotes. Okay, and so where does that come from? Well, let's switch back. Okay, so again, we're dividing by zero, okay, and f of x equals sine of 1 over x is discontinuous at 0 for the same reason, right? Dividing by 0. Right? It's a bad thing. You can't do that. So it's discontinuous there. And then our other function that I just showed was this is tangent of x, which if you remember from trigonometry, that's sine of x divided by cosine of x. Right? But we said before that sine and cosine were continuous functions. So what's happening here? Well, when is cosine of x zero? Right? 
it's zero for x is, uh, I think it's multiples of two pi. Multiples of pi over two. Right? So x equals negative pi over two, pi over two, three pi over two. Right? Any time cosine is zero, we're dividing by zero. Right? So that means that tangent of x is discontinuous at these problem points, right? Whatever makes the denominator zero is a problem point for our function. It's where our function will be discontinuous, right? At x equals two, pi over two, dot, 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 right? And so if we go back to the graph of that, right, we can see, yeah, there's no way we can jump from those pieces to the other piece without picking a pencil off the paper, right? And those kind of asymptotes where they're shooting off the positive and negative infinity is when cosine is zero. So like pi over two, negative pi over two, and then it repeats, right, since it's a periodic. Okay. Um, so let's switch back. So sometimes dividing by zero is disguised, right? So sometimes dividing by zero is like hidden. Right, so let's look at this function. Right, let's take the limit as x goes to t, let's say from the left, of one over x minus three cubed. Right, so maybe straight away it's not that obvious, but if I tried to plug in, right, we try to plug in x equals three. Right, we get one over three minus three cubed equals one over zero equals one over zero, which is bad, right? Because now we're dividing by zero, okay? So this is a case where we have a division by zero, so that is a place where the function will be discontinued. f of x equals one over x minus cubed is discontinuous at equals, right? Because that's a place where we're dividing by zero. So then if we look at function over one over x oops this is x minus one but it's the same thing but it's that okay so x minus three it is discontinuous right it goes off to negative infinity off to positive infinity. and no way for us to jump from one piece to the other by without picking up our pencil we're just trying to draw this jump okay so it's discontinuous at that point Okay, and so actually the limit, right, as we saw, even though we can't, you know, say what the function value is at that point, we still have a limit at that point, right? We saw that as we approach three from the left, this went off to negative infinity, which makes sense because this is plugging smaller numbers than three, so the bottom is negative, and then it gets larger and larger as we get closer to three. Okay, and then this cube conserves the sign, right, so it's still negative. This is negative, then negative cubed is still negative. So it drops off to negative infinity. Okay. What about, you know, something like this? Do another example. Right? Is the function e to the 2x plus c? Well, this is a function. Right? Let's call this f of x. Right, this f of x is actually two functions composed together, right? It's g of h of x, where g of x is e to the x, and h of x is 2x plus 3, right? e to the x, we said that's continuous. 2x plus 3, we said that was continuous, right? That's just a linear function. Therefore, the composition is also continuous, okay? So even when these functions look complicated, they can still be continuous, as long as there isn't some sort of problem point. So here there's no division by zero, there's no piecewise defined anything, and we're not looking at logs of zero either. So this is perfectly fine. It's just a nice continuous function everywhere. Composition is also continuous. Okay, let's try, you know, um, a, what should I call it? A piecewise defined. We haven't really talked about these so far yet, but they're really 
uh, pretty simple. Make it piecewise to find functions. And it sounds like kind of a complicated name, but really it's just a function that's defined in pieces. Let's say f of x is equal to, I don't know, 3 times x. And then it's that for x less than, bigger than 2. And then it's going to be 2x plus 1 for x less than or equal to. Right, so it's defined in these two pieces. For x less than 2, it's 3x. And for x, uh, sorry, for x greater than 2, it's 3x. x less than 2 is this other function. Right, so if I was to draw this out, I think here's the axes. Okay, so here will be 2. Okay, so on one side, it looks like this, right? Eight. Function 3x at x equals 2. This is 6. Right? And it has a hole there since it's only defined for x greater than 2. And for x less than 2, it's 2x plus 1. So uh, that goes to 5. Okay, so let's make this piece blue and make it red. So then when x is equal to 2, this function is 2 times 2 plus 1 equals 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. And then you know, it has a different slope. So it looks something like this, right? On one piece, it's 2x plus 1. On the other piece, right? And this is a case where it is discontinuous, right? At the point x equals 2, continuous everywhere else. Right, so only has a problem point when we're trying to match these two pieces together. They don't match, so there's a jump, right? We can't draw one and then draw the other without jumping and picking our pencil off the paper. That means it's discontinuous at that point, x equals two. But everywhere else, right, we can just draw smoothly forever. Right? So it's continuous at every point except at a problem point where we're jumping. Okay, another example of a piecewise function, right, would be, let's say my function was f of x equals 3x, x greater than 2 again, but then it's 2x plus 2, plus then or equal to 2, right, so it's the same, almost exactly the same function, right, here, we'll draw my blue piece, right, this, And then my red piece, right, so this is at 6, where this hole is. And then my red piece, if I plug in 2, this gives me 4 plus 2 equals. I'm actually going to just continue from the slower slope. Right, so this is all at x equals. Okay, so this is the same thing. It's still piecewise defined, but now they agree at this kind of piecing together point. Right? So this function is continuous everywhere, right? Including the place where I keep, where I, you know, splice these two together. Because they had the same value at that point, the functions continue. Okay? I can draw one, and then it's just kind of a sharp corner, but it's continuous, right? I can draw both of them in one pencil strip. Okay? And so, you know, when you're looking at these functions, Right? We always just want to go back to this kind of list of problem points. Function, you should just assume it's continuous at all the points, except for when you're dividing by zero, trying to take the log of a zero or a negative number, and pay close attention to where we're piecing together those piecewise functions. Right? Because if they agree at the place where they're kind of being pieced together, then it's continuous. But if they don't agree there, then you have a jump, and it's discontinuous. Okay?